Can you build an anchor with just whoopee slings? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinkson. Welcome to my backyard. I have been asked numerous times if we could just use whoopee slings as an anchor, and I have thought about it often myself trying to go lightweight. Now, in theory, these are individual, so it is redundant, and they are plenty strong. The AM steel I have here is 3 16 Most often, whoopies are made out of quarter inch or six millimeter. I decided to go with five millimeter because I always use this in conjunction with a sliding X, which we have some other videos on whether or not sliding Xs equalize. So we're gonna crank down our ratchet system and try to put four or five kilonewtons on our master point and see if we could get all these dynos to read the same by not cheating and just going by feel when we pre-tension and then crank it down and see if these read evenly. So I have 0.1 kilonewtons on here now and I want to feel if any of these are loose. And if I manually milk them, uh, then will it, when it's time to crank it down, will they equalize? These are very, very static. So if, let's say, this one's holding all the force, it might hold the force throughout the entire process. So let's find out. So our master point is settling at four-ish kilonewtons. And our dynos over here are reading 0.72, 0.34, 1.7, and 1.2. You know what's funny is uh, this equalizes almost as good as a sliding X on a straight line bolt pattern. I don't know if this is a, you know impressive or not. This is seeing quite a bit of force compared to this one, but the uh, other ones are seeing enough in themselves. There is enough safety ratio there in theory that this would work because these break around 20-ish kilonewtons, and the 6 millimeters break around 30-ish kilonewtons. So I just cranked it down again, and that's 4.8 kilonewtons. 4.4 kilonewtons is 1,000 pounds. And over here, our most loaded dynamometer is 1.95, and then our other ones are all over the place. These outside ones are seeing more. Uh, if I kick it a bit, it changes it some. And I think that is one of the most interesting parts about this is if your high line is moving, if these are not flat, horizontal, and A-framed up, you could be shock loading these. So let's try this one more time. These are all loose again. These are all zeroed out. And I want to see if, um, if I can manually feel whether or not they equalize. All right, so I cranked it down to 5.2. 4.4 is 1,000 pounds. And here we have, let's see here, 1.4, 1 1.5, and this one is seen the most. Um, well, it's actually not too bad, considering uh, most of our sliding X's that we've been building for years equalize about that poorly. Um, this is redundant because all these legs are isolated but you don't want your anchor moving around a lot if you have it on such static slings. Now what I mean by that is you don't want this anchor moving whenever you're walking on the high line. So here I have my backpack with the extra webbing or extra gear, uh, making it as a little A-frame, something that lifts it up and then goes over. So when it goes up and down, it doesn't affect how these are being pulled. Now this does not work ever at all on a vertical anchor. Vertical anchors are horrible because as soon as you go down a little, it puts all the force here. And when you go up a little, it puts all the force here. It's really hard to get these two bottom bolts to equalize. And so most of the time our bolt patterns are flat and the problem is they're always like in a row. Whereas we've discovered when equalization is not a myth, that the center bolts need to be further back. But in the configuration we have it most of the time, these things are seen 
uh, a safe enough working load that I would be willing to do this depending, depending, depending on your situation. Let's find out if a BFK equalizes any better. Uh, here I've slid it all the way around. I have my tails coming off both ends and you don't have to tie a fisherman's if you're doing a BFK. You just try to pull it evenly towards the tree and I don't have enough rope right now to do a figure eight so I'm just going to do an overhand knot. And there is my BFK, my big fucking knot. Okay, so our anchor is at 4.5 kilonewtons. Our BFK has settled. Our tails are just sticking out of the end here. So when we untie this, we don't have to untie anything else. It is a nice way of doing it. Um, all these strands are independent because of this knot. And all these legs are independent because of this knot. So let's find out if the oh holy grail of BFKs equalizes any better than our whoopee slings. Oh my god. 0 0.3, 0.8, 2.4, and 1. Now I still love my BFKs, but that is bullshit. Let's see here. It is... It is not moving. We commonly are not pulling on our bolts evenly. Look the difference between that one and that one. Constantly is a problem. I don't think whoopee slings is kosher. I don't think it's normal. I think it's kind of thinking outside the box. But at the same time, this is horrible. So let's try whoopee slings in the bolt pattern we discovered that equalizes automatically. The ones, the bolts that are closest see the most force and the ones most in line see the most force. So we put the ones most in line further back to cancel out those concepts. And this pattern right here does equalize with a sliding X. So I just cranked down a little bit more than four kilonewtons on this guy. I felt the whoopies, I did not cheat. And here we have 0.68 and 1.06 on the outside and 1.1 and 1.29 in the middle. These are actually equalized safe enough that I would feel very comfortable highlining on that. Notice I still have my bag A-framing it up so this doesn't move ever during the highline. So let's see this same awesome bolt pattern with a BFK. We're uh, resting down a 4.08 kilonewtons. We have our tails uh, embedded into the knot and this is canyoneering rope, it's not dynamic. And so we have 1.3, 1 1.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7. So the back bolts are seeing about 50% of what the sides are seeing, which is usually the other way around. Now I'm sure if I use these other bolts that I have put here, um, maybe it would equalize better. This pattern is great for a sliding X, whereas this BFK is, obviously you can manipulate it. Um, I'm can, sure I can try tying it again and keep playing with it, but it's guessing at best, just like whoopee slings. Now, what makes this BFK better and more normal than whoopee slings is this is a lot more abrasion resistant. This is canyoneering rope. All these legs are isolated. This is super bomber. To break this in our slack snap episodes, has been anywhere, I imagine this rope specifically, 15 to 20,000 pounds. I don't know, kilonewtons off the top of my head. So uh, this is normal, this is bomber, this is standard. Whoopee slings are not. But as you can see, nothing's equalizing perfectly in any of the situations we're setting up here. Okay, I retied it. I just wanted to see if we can get this to be right. 4.7. 1.09, 1.11, 1 1.04, and 1.6. So I call that pretty damn equalized. It's actually better than the whoopee slings. You just have to really know how to tie your BFK. I had too much tension on these when I was tying it, and I knew that. Um, so I tried to compensate. And you can really feel that all of these are fairly even. So if you don't have all the dynamometers, you know 
deep in your heart whether or not this is equalized. So I think we have discovered that you can use whoopee slings only as an anchor. Now these are five millimeter whoopee slings and I recommend if you do that you go with six millimeter whoopee slings in case one of these, God forbid, sees all the fours. You want enough safety ratio. However, this 10 meter long, eight millimeter diameter canyoneering rope is um, the same size and just the same price. So if you just learn how to tie some BFKs, you actually have a lot more versatility with a rope when you try to rig all natural, when you try to do different configurations with bolts. This is normal, kosher, standard, ideal. Um, it's more abrasion resistant. And if your anchor moves a little with a BFK, it's not the end of the world even though you still have your equalization issues. This just doesn't do anything beneficial unless you were in the mountains and you dropped this and you had a backpack full of these. Yes, you could go highlighting and probably not die. So just take the time to learn how to tie a BFK, always checking your legs to make sure you did it right. And if you watch this YouTube channel long enough, you might be tempted to do sketchy things. Therefore, you shouldn't go highlining.